Okay, um... So about that death. Well, you know, here's the thing. I was an idiot. And I forgot to press triangle. Hey everybody, Nostalgia Scott coming to you guys with part 3 of our Spiral the Dragon Reignited playthrough. So, this is on the Xbox and we're going to Clifftown. Yeah, level 2. And then we have Ice Cavern, the Speedway, and the boss. Which we may actually be able to do them all in this episode. So it'll probably take about two videos per... Technically it would take one video per world if there weren't cutscenes and stuff like that. But the most we'll ever spend in one zone is two videos. So, holy Jesus there, uh, Spyro, you went up really high. Oh, Mexicans. Seems a little mean that I'm murdering random Mexican dudes, but... Whatever floats Spyro's boat, I guess. Also, we have 400 gems, 3 dragons, 1 egg, and no skill point here because the skill point is for the boss. Also, one thing I do like is the dunes that they have out there, and then like, you can see like clouds and stuff, and dust storms, and... I think it's pretty cool. The music here is also pretty good. Now, with these pots of whatever it is, it looks like magma. Or lava, I guess, because it's above ground. Just flame them and a gem will pop out every single time. Not every single time you use your flame breath, but if you haven't already done it yet, they'll always drop a gem. See? It had been a small gem that time, but it was still a gem nonetheless. And we do want to collect as many gems as possible, because we are trying to get 100%. I believe this is the only Spiral game, too, where it only has 100%. Spiral 2 and 3 have more than 100%, even though... Technically, you can't get over 100%. It's just they do that because there's, like, post-game stuff. And post-game stuff, for whatever reason, is always above 100%. Also, I don't remember this guy being so hard to catch. Also, the guys laughing in the background there are getting kind of weird. But thank you for the egg. Now, where's that guy that kept laughing at me? There you are. Oh, that's one of them, at least. There's the second one. You guys are just... Oh, God, there's lots of them, actually. Oh, they're dead now. Oh, free life. I still want to know what's in there, because it has a, it's a little creature that has, like, hands, or I guess claws. No idea what it is. I kind of wish there was, like, concept art to, like, I, I assume it's a mimic. I guess next time we find a life, we're going to have to, like, wait and see what it is. But anyways, we might as well go and grab this dragon now and see who they are. Our first dragon is Halvor. How's a dragon supposed to flame metal armor anyway? Remember, Spyro, flame won't work on metal, but charging with your horns, that should do the trick. Thank you, buddy. As if I didn't already know that and didn't kill like a bajillion of them already. No idea what these creatures are either. They don't look like norks, unless these are just what like desert norks look like. At least in Spyro 2, there's kind of a reasoning to why the enemies are so diverse. This game, not really. Like, he was just supposed to have turned Norks into, or like, gems into Norf warriors. Doesn't explain literally any of the other enemies, though. So I always found that kind of a weird situation. Also, I should have grabbed this when I was down here. Because we technically need to get a pyre for the rest of the stuff. That one we could have actually got when we were on the ground level, and I don't know why I ignored it. Alright, let's cross these cool little bridges. I do, I will admit that this level is really cool. It's a really interesting design, even back in the original. Do they sound effects that I die are just so funny? Ooh. Also, this dragon up here had one of my favorite voices back in the day. But sadly, they changed it. It's, it's still good, and his voice line is still the exact same. It's just... I miss just the way it sounded. It sounded way more intense than this guy does. 
Yeah, and those fireworks, what they do is they destroy the metal boxes that we can't destroy. Same thing as a hero's tail. So if you guys came from watching that playthrough or stuck around for playing or watching, because a lot of you people have mainly been watching it and the Crash Bandicoot, which by the way, I did fix the Crash Bandicoot thing, so we'll be recording that probably sometime next week. So look forward to that. And we have Enzo. Hey, what's on the other side of that river? Why don't you glide there and find out? He used to say, why don't you glide there and find out? Like, it was a lot more sinister. In this game, it's just... Whatever. Also, that is not a river. Um... Did you see that? I literally got stuck on the ledge. Uh, the joys of having my Xbox facing the wrong way with the sensors behind it. I was gonna have a drink of water, but I guess I'll do that when I get the next dragon. Because the loading time wasn't half as bad as I thought it would be. Alright, if you want the achievement here, just kill all these vultures. Yeah, a few, like I said, in A Hero's Tale, a few of the enemies in the Spire games do reappear within multiple levels. But they're not, like, in every single level like they were in A Hero's Tale. Where they only had, like, maybe ten enemy types altogether. And including some that were only in one very split second of a level, like the Chameleons in the Sparks levels. Remember when I said the Sparks levels got progressively easier? They really did. Without, like, the, ro the falling rock hazards, the game was just too much of a joke. I don't know why they, like... And including the final boss of that game, too, which is going to be up before you see this episode. Uh, or before you see the first part of this uh, series, I should say. It just... It really makes you question, like, what they were thinking. Like, was there a reason to why it was so easy? Anyways, so we have the final dragon here, Marco. You've reached the highest point in Clifftown. You can get to almost anywhere from here. If I were you, I'd use that whirlwind over there. Thank you. Uh, we do want these gems over here, though. No, let's grab these. And these... Actually, that makes me want to question something, because I don't know if I grabbed these ones. No, I didn't. I always forget those two gems there for whatever reason. You're probably wondering, like, where all the gems are, considering there's so many left. Oh, surprise, they're actually behind here, and I don't even know how I figured this out as a kid. I just did. It was just instinct to go back here for whatever reason. And there we go. That's all 400 gems. Oh my god, now the exit portal is like a bajillion miles away. Uh, righty then. Luckily though, a whirlwind does open up. So we can just take this whirlwind all the way up here and return home. So there we go. Another level done and another 400 gems in our collection. Now we're at 2,000. We should get to 25... No, I think we'll get to 3,000 here. With that done... Uh, we can now go down here to level 3, Ice Cavern. Yeah, which doesn't follow the desert theme, but it still has the cave, cliffy type theme. Also, I like the Aurora effect that they have in the background of this loading screen. Another thing I don't like about this game that it's just a small one and it's more of a visual thing i don't feel like the level loading screens like this have as much um personality as they did in the original it's just some kind of weird blurred out background but while the levels themselves look good the loading screens in this game are kind of bad also the music here is great and this level is massive there are 400 gems and five dragons it is insanely difficult to 100 percent this level okay no it's not really it's actually not that hard of a level. It's also my favorite level in this world. My least favorite? Probably being Dr. Shemp. Not because it's a bad level. It's just... It's just the most generic out of all of them. Also, that bat didn't die. Also, that's our first dragon already. Like, what, not even 30 seconds into the level? Let's go and collect some of this stuff over here before we get him. And I say him because all the dragons are male, for whatever reason. I guess it's because that's who mainly did, like, voice acting in video games back then. It wasn't, like, a, a, a sexist thing or anything like that. It was just, just how it was. Anyways, we have our first dragon, Ulrich. 
word of caution, little one. Wait until you grow big, <clears throat> like me, before charging those large enemies. All right, that's uh, pretty cool. But that's advice that we've already gone over before. Oh look, it's one of the big enemies. And a second dragon already. Also, for these gems, you have to hit the pole. Luckily, in this game, they gave him a slightly bigger hitbox. In the original, sometimes you slide off the pole, and you die. Also, before grabbing that dragon, I actually like to do something, because we actually have to backtrack this way. So what I do is I'll take this pathway, and this will lead us to the key. And you're probably wondering, key for what? Oh, that chest right there. And yes. So what we need to do is we need to go down there and see the key is literally right next to the chest, but it's all the way down. Okay, um... So about that death. Well, you know, here's the thing. I was an idiot, and I forgot to press triangle. Remember how I said that the enemies will respawn too? Yeah, that's what I mean by enemies respawn before you get the, the checkpoint. Anyways, remember to press triangle, unlike me the first time. Because I was so used to a hero's tail where you literally had a double jump and that was it. You could glide, but you couldn't hover or drop down or anything like that. That game was just really clunky. Luckily this game isn't clunky like that. Including the original of the game, too. Also, I just charged through his snowball. I guess which makes perfect sense considering it's literally just a snowball. But still. Ooh, I'm dead. You defeated me. You guys just aren't intimidating. Now, I want to see what these guys are. Remember I said I wanted to see what they are? Yeah, I don't know what they are. They have little claws, but... I'm assuming they're just mimics, right? Just just mimics. Also, I have no idea how to get those lives. To this day, I still don't know how to get them. It's really weird, because I really have no clue. I guess now we can go up here. I know I'm ignoring the dragons, but we have to backtrack, like I said before, so don't worry about it. Now, for these norks, you actually have to charge them off the ledge. Yeah, remind you of that one area in Spy uh, Hero's Tale? Yeah, that's that's why I mentioned this game for that part. Except you can stunlock these guys. Unlike that game where you couldn't stunlock them. Which is bogus, because they could technically stunlock you in that game, and you could just die. Which was obnoxious, that... Like, I don't get why enemies can stun lock you in certain games, but you can't stun lock them. It doesn't sound fair at all. Also, remember how we had Wing Shield in that game? Yeah, Wing Shield literally. I tried it on so many dudes when I was, like, doing the off screen stuff, like, to collect the gems and. St or, like, the light gems and, uh, eggs and a mist. Yeah, a lot of the, the, the enemies just pierce your Wing Shield or just don't get their attack deflected back. It's just like the Water Breath. The water breath in that game was also like 100% useless other than a few mini games and a few fire enemies, but the ice breath worked just as fine. So that game really didn't take their abilities and stuff into consideration. Anyways, we have our next dragon here, which is Ragnar Lothbrok. You've done well, Spyro. Some dragons thought you weren't ready, but I knew they were wrong. I'm ready, alright. Um, ready for what? One thing I don't like is why the key stays on your screen when you have that. Or, um, not when you have that. When you're, um, in a cutscene. Like, I think that's weird. Anyways, now we can take this pathway. Yeah, so we'll be able to 100% this world, which is pretty cool. So we'll break everything here, and we'll grab the dragon. I believe this dragon is just one that has nothing to say, and or. Thank you for releasing me. Yeah, he just says thank you for releasing me. That's cool, I guess. 
Ah oh, yes, now we have more ice cave parts. But I think we're done the part with... Yeah, I believe this is the only other... There might be one more, but I'm pretty sure he's the last of the, uh... The armored enemies that are on the ice here. Oh, he slipped. No, he is the last one, because this is this is the backtracking part that I mentioned. Oh yeah, only 30 gems to go. Oh, we might as well grab this dragon now. We have Todor. Spyro, some big norks up ahead are wearing armor. And in the ice cave, armor can make their feet very slippery. Hmm. Yeah, I didn't reverse order. Get out of here. Oh yeah, no, we need to go back up here. Wait, that wasn't all the dra- oh no, there's the one at the very end. It's like, we don't have the last dragon, really? Oh, I guess that is all the gems. Huh. I don't remember there being that many in there, but oh well. Alright, after this we gotta do the flight level, my least favorite part about every Spyro game, essentially. Except Spyro 2 has one of my favorite ones, where it actually is one of my favorite levels in the entire game. And anyways, we have the last dragon, Asher. Thanks for freeing me, Spyro. And now, where was I? They added the now where was I part to that guy. But anyways, level complete. Let's go to the speedway. Another 400 gems to the collection. So that means the speedway also has 300, which will bring us to 27, and then that means the boss will have it. Because it always, until the final world, you always end on a very specific amount. And it's always an even in the thousands. Oh, I didn't think I made that. Anyways, let's do a night flight. Um, I'm trying to remember if this is my least favorite of the flight levels or not. I always get no. I'm pretty sure this one is because next one is crystal and then wild and then icy. Yeah, there's a lot of levels to go still, though a lot of them can be beaten pretty quickly. I will admit though that the sky here is pretty good. Ugh. Also, they removed the multicolored rings in this game, and they also removed the animated, like, icons for when you collect things. Like, the rings used to move. The chests were always, like, a, a stale entity, but I don't know why they, they do weird choices like that in these games, where it's, like, one step forward, two steps back kind of thing. That's how a lot of games, like, especially online games, update. Is they just make it so... They they step on their own foot when they're doing stuff, because then it just makes the game seem kind of bad. I'm not saying this game is bad or anything, like, it's far from perfect. But it's definitely not a bad game, per se. Alright, now we gotta get these lighthouses, and hopefully we have enough time. Unlike the other Spyro games, these ones are a lot more difficult to actually, you know, get within the allotted amount of time, simply because of how, like, they're designed. Also, if you want the achievement, you actually have to flame the spiders, and now nah, we're gonna get it. And there we go, 100% on this level. Literally took a minute. And there we go, another 300 gems added to our total gem collection. Thank you very much. 2,700. Woo! Now, we do have a skill point that we have to get on this next level, or on this next level, in this next level, during the boss fight. So, let's go do a Dr. Shemp, which is another kind of just generic deserty type level, but kind of interesting at the same time. And why is it my fa for least favorite actual level of this area? And simply because it just feels... I don't know, like, it just, it's too easy. I love the eclipse, though, that they have here. But see, it's, like, just a cliff with some smoke. Like, it looks cool, don't get me wrong. It's just the same kind of enemies that we were already facing. Oh, we missed that. I just realized they're not wearing pants or underwear, but don't have anything. They're just, like, big, fat, chunky creatures. Also, yeah, we have 300 gems and one dragon and a skill point. You already knew what was coming here. What, like how I mentioned things beforehand. Ooh, that double gem grab. Time saving. 
I knew those enemies were coming. Oh my god, they get so annoying with their charging enemies. The fact that I just hear that one, oh, that was a male enemy. That's. I'm assuming it was the boss I heard. Because that was not the sound effect of any of the enemies. I think we killed all the. I keep hearing it. I didn't know you could hear the boss from that far away. That's just weird. There we go, we got a purple gem. The rarest of gems. Also, we have another key. Which is a pain in the butt, because I really wish you could hide the key logo in a cutscene. But for whatever reason, you can't. Oh, I guess we'll grab this dragon then. We have Trondo. I think it's a Rambo dude. Dr. Shemp thinks he's so cool. You don't know what it's been like listening to him over and over. But I tell you one thing. He should watch his back. That's actually good advice, because guess what? He actually does have to watch his back, because that's how you have to kill him. Did we actually kill them? I assume we do, because these guys were gems, right? And okay, it's the boss in here that I keep hearing. Even though he's like way over here, I keep hearing the dude. I don't even know if this guy's a Nork. Like, is he a Nork? Yeah, and then when he turns around, you flame his big old booty. Which is a big trend with Norks. They tend not to wear pants. No idea why. They just don't. And then he does like a spin smack attack. Now he's actually gonna... Did he spit? There we go. Skill point acquired. Man down. I do love how bosses drop multiple gems, though. Like, it does feel rewarding. And we should only be missing 25, yep. And this should be the last 25. Oh, I almost hit that pole. That could have went bad. Level complete. So, I think now we have enough time to go and do the next home world. And then we'll call it an episode. Which is pretty cool. Pretty, pretty darn cool. So, let's leave. In through the portal we go. Dun, 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 dun. And we're at 3,000 gems. Not too shabby. Gotta admit, we're doing pretty darn good. Alright, and then that leaves we the balloonist over here. The balloonist is usually at the end of the world, but for whatever reason he's not the end here. I can't believe how fast you found so much stolen treasure. Up aboard for the Magic Crafter's world if you're ready. I am ready. Let's go have a drink of water and fly away. Yeah, Magic Crafters will definitely be the last level we do in this episode. We're already, we've already been recording for 22 and a half minutes, so... And there's really not a lot to edit out in these. Like, we could edit out these, like, loading times, but they're not that long anyway. And it gives me time to talk to you guys about stuff that, you know, we don't have time to when we're, you know, playing through the game. Also, yeah, now we're in a mountainy zone. And there's the other balloonist over there, at the very end of the world. We also have 300 gems, 3 dragons, and 2 eggs. Now bear in mind, there is an egg right here, and I really recommend you get it here. Because it does become a pain in the butt if you don't. There's one of the two eggs already. This is also the last world in the game where you can get eggs. Also, I don't think the skill point's here. No. The achievement here, though, is you actually have to kill all these guys in a single charge like that. Which is pretty cool, I guess. Anyways, we have our first dragon, which I believe is Cosmos. Yep, Cosmos. Welcome to Magic Crafters. I want you to release the dragons, reclaim our treasure, and recover the eggs from those pesky blue thieves. I don't know how your cape is attached, because it doesn't look like there's any way to attach it, but yeah. These druids, what they'll do is they'll actually manipulate the area around them to their advantage. For an example, we can't actually get up this way from the side because he'll raise up the cliff. That was a cool feature back for a PS1 game. Like, let's be real. There we go, you guys are dead. And you're all dead. Everybody dies. I really do like the look of this level. It reminds me a lot of Colossus before they remade the games, though. 
Here's level one, Alpine Ridge. Honestly, my favorite level here, just because the design of it's just overall good. Can't. And there we go, there's the last egg in this level. Not the last egg in the entire game, but this level. Huh. Seems like we can't do that. Huh. A pathway with arrows. Interesting. Wonder what that could mean. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. That guy's dead, which means this pathway is now officially opened. We'll grab these gems. Are we missing anything else? Aha. There we go. You're toast. You're toasted like a nork. And we do have this dragon now. We have Xantor. When you see arrows like these, you can charge along with them to begin a supercharge. Supercharge? Excellent! Go ahead. Try it. Oh no, peer pressure. Woohoo! Let's try it. In this game, though, you actually build up supercharge speed over time, which is not at all how this game originally worked. I just murdered those wizards, though. Holy cow. Stop going wow in the background, please. It's not very wow that you're doing that. Oh. I missed that right gem because I almost slipped off. That would have been terrifying. These guys that just keep saying wow are getting annoying. Alrighty then. Um, let's go back this way. Kill this dweeb and this dweeb. And we have the next level, Wizard Peak. Which is a pretty interesting level to say the least. It's actually a pretty fun one. Wait, are we really... Really, the chest only has 10 gems? Yes, there's another key, by the way. Lo and behold, the fact that there's only 10 gems over there is silly. Anyways, let's go grab this last dragon. We have Boldar. This portal leads to a special place where you can learn to fly. I remember when I was a young dragon, earning my wings. Learn to fly. Got it. Alright, nice. So now we just have to go back to get the rest of the gems, and we are done. Which is pretty cool. Pretty, pretty cool. Pretty, pretty cool. And let's open up this chest. For a few green gems, and boom! That's it. That's it for this episode, guys. So, if you guys enjoyed this video, please remember to leave a like, comment, subscribe. Join the Discord and Patreon link below. Uh, hit the bell for notifications. If you guys want to see a Let's Play, you can always comment it down below, and I'll see if I can play it for you guys. And I will see you guys all next time. Have a wonderful day, and bye-bye.